Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Svetlana Luparenko. I am Doctor of Pedagogical Sciences, Professor at the Department of Agriculture and Innovative Pedagogy in uh, Skavarada Kharkiv National Pedagogical University. Today I want to present the lecture on the topic The Transformation of Attitude to Childhood from Ancient Times to Nowadays. The studies of psychologists and ethnographic data on the development of children in different societies have shown that a childhood has a specific historical character and its content and duration have changed over the centuries. The world of childhood is an integral part of the way of life and culture of any nation and humanity as a whole. The image of child, which is formed in each culture, is an internalized version of the ideas about it, inherent in certain culture and certain stage of historical development. Therefore, the discovery of childhood and understanding the uniqueness of it was preceded by a long period of adults' awareness of their own personality. The ideas about children and childhood were being formed on the basis of people's gradual awareness of themselves and their inner nature. According to the ideas of the famous psychologist Elkonin, childhood appeared at the stage of evolution when children couldn't be included in the system of social reproduction directly because they couldn't master the tools people used. As a result, the natural involvement of children in productive work was delayed. In the early stage of development of human society, when collecting these uh, primitive uh, tools was the main way to get food, children very quickly and early adapted to adults' work and practically learned how to use primitive tools and get food. The childhood of such children was short and didn't require special training for work and life. Children learned everything by watching and imitating adults, and at an early age they could do the same kinds of work. In general, in ancient times people denied the importance of childhood and the uniqueness of it, because society was dominated by adult centrism. The analysis of the texts of ancient myths, works of art, shows that the value of child's life was very low. A child was considered to be a small copy of an adult. It is important to note uh, that the full concept of parenthood and the system of use on child's development was formed by ancient Greeks. As children under the age of seven and girls even longer were brought up at home and everything uh, that happened there significantly influenced the development of children, it was the family that helped to determine the views on childhood and parenting. There were two basic models of ancient uh, Greek family, the Athenian and the Spartan. The common feature of the both models uh, was the contemptuous attitude to children. They were considered to be the reason for future spending and worries. Adults didn't consider uh, a newborn child to be a person until the family officially recognized the child. And ancient uh, upbringing was based on the image of an adult. At the same time, there was some differences in attitude towards children in different family models. For example, Spartan families killed sick and weak children because people of Sparta considered it uneconomical to spend their time and money on disabled children. Healthy children were needed as future worries. In the Athenian family, in addition to infanticide, there, was customs, uh, there were customs of living and selling children. Uh, however, children who remained in the family often had enough attention of their parents. Despite all the difficulties uh, of the relationship, a child was considered to be the main component of home life. Moreover, children in Athenian families were brought up more diversely physically, aesthetically, intellectually. They grew up in a world of toys, fairy tales, stories of famous poets and writers of the time. 
Uh, it is necessary uh, to note that ancient Greeks uh, began to study the characteristics of children. They affirmed that children were trustful and sensitive, a child's mind was plastic and imagination was white. So, ancient Greeks' views on a child were contradictory. On the one hand, there was cruel attitude to children. Uh, they were sold and became slaves. On the other hand, ancient Greeks studied child's nature, and parents in families showed their attention and care for children. In ancient Rome, adults' attitude to children and childhood was similar. A father as a member of the family had the right to control the lives and deaths of all family members. But this attitude was more caring and attentive and was not as cruel as in ancient Greece. In Rome, parents were uh, equally responsible for uh, the ethical, physical and mental upbringing of their children. In ancient Romans, uh, the ancient Romans considered uh, the problem uh, of uh, how a child differs from an adult, uh, and it was an attempt to identify the characteristics of children uh, of different age and explore childhood. In general, uh, ancient Greeks and Romans had some ideas about the specifics of uh, children's growth, uh, interests, needs, uh, and implementation of educational influences. In the works of ancient philosophers, we can read the ideas about child's development and advice on education and training in family and school. The main centers of children's upbringing and education in Mesopotamia were the family, temples, and the first schools. And most ancient documents reveal the important role of the family in children's upbringing, which was implemented based on the principles of value, wisdom, and humanity. However, the attitude to children was not always humane. The authority of adults was undeniable. The main purpose of children's upbringing and development in ancient Egypt was determined by their transfer to the adult world. Uh, special attention was paid to children because adults believed that their future lives depended on children. As a result, uh, they tried to raise children properly and give them necessary preparation for adult life. In ancient Egypt, the school emerged as a family institution, as it was a tradition to inherit the profession. However, education of children was based on authoritarianism and physical punishment was used. In ancient India, children were considered to be a part of the universe, and their teachings, uh, teaching and upbringing uh, were determined by religious movements and scriptures. The features of the ancient Indian traditions of education were the following. The need for pedagogical influence on a child from, from an early age. Uh, different education and, uh, of children um, uh, from different castes. Uh, multifaceted influence on children and focus on their moral upbringing and inner self-development. Attitudes to children and views on uh, their upbringing in ancient China was formed on the basis on Confucianism and Taoism. Persons' moral self-development was made purpose of the educational process. In general, in the ancient world, a child grew up in difficult conditions. He was recognized as a person, uh, the need uh, to, uh, to take into account a uh, uh, child's nature in educational process uh, was uh, sometimes declared, uh, but in real life, punishment and severity in education prevailed. Uh, preparation for adult life, uh, children's early inclusion in it were the task uh, of the early period of child's life. Uh, Christianity played an important role in raising the status of children. Under its influence, infanticide began to be considered both as crime and uh, as a terrible sin.
Prominent French demographer and historian uh, Philippe Arias believed that from the 13th century, the discovery of childhood as one of the periods of human life uh, took place, and during the 14th, 17th centuries, there was gradual awareness of the need for childhood. In the Middle Ages, people didn't determine childhood as a specific period in uh, human development due to Christian doctrine according to which a man, even a baby, comes into this world uh, being already sinful and punishment for the original sin uh, accompanies him from the first minutes of life. In addition, a child was seen as uh, an arbitrary creature that doesn't differ from an adult. In poor families, every child was considered to be future workforce. But in wealthy families, parents were more responsible for their children. However, there were no special institutions, no books on child care, and there was no separate world of childhood. Children and adults had the same games, toys, fairy tales, entertainments, clothes, and from the age of seven, children were engaged in adults' activities. Despite all cruelty of the Middle Ages, at this, at this time the diametrically opposed understanding of children appeared. It became the starting point for the further development of humane pedagogy. Gradually, more and more teachers and uh, educators called not to punish children, but to show love, kindness, and sincerity to them. Uh, moreover, in the Middle Ages, orphanages uh, began to appear in Europe. It should be noted uh, that the theme of children was seldom raised in art before the 13th, 14th centuries. Children's images in painting were found only in religious and allegorical subjects. Images of real children have long been absent from art. Even if they occasionally appeared in works of art, they were portrayed as small adults. Uh, however, at the end of the Middle Ages, the picturesque scenes with images of children began to appear, uh, which also indicates that at this time childhood was gradually considered to be important by adults. Uh, regarding the development of use on a child in the medieval East, it should be noted that Islamic thinkers uh, under the influence of philosophical and pedagogical heritage of antiquity uh, put forward the idea of humane, harmonious upbringing, uh, taking into account social and biological determinants. Uh, views on the formation of personality in medieval India were formed under the influence of Hindu and Buddhist pedagogical traditions. In the Hindu tradition, the caste system of organization of the society was preserved, which led to uh, inequality of children in access to education and uh, differentiation of their training. However, Buddhist traditions were more democratic and all educational functions were transferred uh, to monks, uh, which helped to expand uh, children's learning opportunities and increase the number of subjects. At the heart of education in medieval China was Confucianism, which focused on a person's spiritual development, providing equal opportunities for all to learn. But the organization of the educational process was strict, had no focus on the development of children's creativity and allowed their punishment. At this time, there were significantly, significant changes in the relationship between adults and children. Parents became more emotional about them, participated in the upbringing of their children, and this is a sign uh, of increased attention to personality and family values at this time. A characteristic feature of this period was the spread of humanistic ideas that put a person in the center of the world. Humanist educators argued that education uh, should reveal and develop uh, the abilities inherent in uh, a child, promote the harmony of his physical and spiritual life. They suggested building the process of education on child's freedom, interest, and activity.
In addition, uh, the invention of the printing press necessitated uh, the emergence of literate people who could uh, read uh, as the ability to read was necessary for life. Children began to be considered as someone special and immature adults. Schooling began to be uh, identified uh, with the special nature of childhood. During this period, uh, the development of the idea of childhood can also be seen in art. Portraits of real children appeared more often and uh, in clothing. Uh, in 16th, 17th century, special uh, uh, children's uh, clothes uh, appeared. So, in the Renaissance, the understanding of the concept of childhood was expressed and deepened. Another step in understanding the significance of childhood was done by Jan Amos Comenius, who substantiated the classroom uh, system and the principles of education and upbringing, as education and upbringing were associated with uh, childhood. Moreover, uh, some works uh, for parents appeared. They revealed the features of child's development and organization of children's education and upbringing. The value attitude to a childhood was substantiated by Rousseau and the German Romanist Goethe Schlegel. They spoke about the worth of ch children's lives and their personalities. This was due to the development of science and technologies, political revolutions in Europe, urbanization uh, of life, geographical discoveries, and transition to individualized uh, hygienic lifestyle, complicated the sphere of life and mechanism of socialization, increasing the value of individuality in culture, personal growth, etc. Economic growth also played an important role in the recognition of childhood as adults spend the surplus of their money on children, buying large houses with many rooms, clothes, toys for children, investing in their education. On the other hand, a child up to 7-8 years was considered a mentally immature person uh, who needed special treatment and care. Rousseau acknowledged that a child is perfect, kind by nature, and the educator's task was not to spoil what a child's mind and soul had. The philosopher changed the attitude to a child. Instead of cruelty, he offered to preserve good in a child. Another scholar who paid much attention to the period of childhood was Pestalozzi. He tried to make childhood a school of joy and creative work with special focus on orphans. Despite the fact that all aspects of a children's life began to attract the attention of parents, the function of their organized preparation for entering the adult world was not taken by the family any longer, but by special social institution, school. Gradually, uh, school life became an integral part of childhood. School and family upbringing contributed to the further differentiation of childhood. During the 18th century, there was a differentiation of certain sphere, uh, spheres and life phenomena into adults and children's spheres uh, and activities, which testified to the special status of childhood. They were the emergence of fashion for children's clothing, children's literature, and books on pediatrics, and a specialized market for products aimed at children was formed. So in the 18th century, the concept of childhood originated. It was based on the idea of innocence, weakness, and insufficient development of children's nature, which requires a comprehensive education. At the same time, the concept of ethical responsibility of adults and the whole system of education for children emerged. During the 19th century, there was a clear separation of the worlds, adult and child. The world of adults identified a range of issues that were considered to be only for adults and carefully protected from the world of children. The importance of childhood in human life was gradually realized by adults. Besides, in the 19th century, due to physiological and psychological research, 
childhood and its role in adult life gained widespread recognition. It was during this period that childhood began to be regarded as a preparatory stage during which the foundations of all subsequent life paths are laid. At the same time, the socialization of a child, his adaptation to life circumstances, moral upbringing gradually took a significant role uh, in upbringing, and children's behavior began to be more closely controlled. At this time, two models of attitudes uh, to parenting, learning and development were formed in society. In wealthy families, children were given a lot of attention. Home teachers and governesses were hired and parents tried to restrict communication of their children with poor children. At the same time, the literature of the 19th century uh, described the absence of childhood uh, of poor children. Charles Dickens, Charlotte Bronte and other poets and writers revealed the image of poor children who didn't have home uh, comfort uh, as well as victims of family and school tyranny, although children were uh, described as naive and innocent. Children from poor families usually, stated, uh, usually started working with adults uh, at the age of six and seven, and their working day lasted 16 uh, hours. Uh, the status of child began to form only in the middle of the 19th century, when child lab uh, labor was prohibited due to child pro uh, protection legislation. Factory acts of the uh, 1840s protected children from unrestricted exploitation at work. However, the law protected children to some extent. Children continued to do various types of adult work, caring for young uh, family members, housework, some agricultural work. And the status of childhood depended on the position of their parents in the society. Among the achievements of the 19th century, the following can be noted. Childhood became the subject of study in literature, art, and science. The industry began to produce large volumes of children's toys and books. Scientific works on competent physical care for children became popular. Various pedagogical clubs were opened. Parents visited them in order to expand their pedagogical knowledge. Scientists conducted pedagogical observations of children and scientific journals presented their results. Uh, studies of disabled children were carried out and special children's institutions were organized. There were increased interest in children's clothing. It began to be made more comfortable for children. Moreover, in the 19th century, schools for small children began to appear. Their task was to form the qualities and abilities inherent in a child, and these schools became the basis for the formation of preschool education in the world. In the 19th century, the, net for, uh, the network of kindergartens uh, became widespread in the world and was an integral part of the social movement formed by a new pedocentric ideology of a childhood. The end of the 19th century, the beginning of the 20th century, was a period of transformation of the useful child of the 19th century into the priceless child of the 20th century. This was due to a number of reasons. Uh, firstly, there was a specific situation in society which was uh, associated with the intensive development of industry, a new level of social life, democratic freedoms, personal independence, which ex uh, exacerbated the problem of human individuality, freedom and creative development. Uh, the idea of freedom was introduced into the pedagogical world. Uh, but it required a different, more attentive attitude to children, which required study the specific features of human development. Secondly, the scholars began studying the specific features of the human psyche, so uh, childhood became the object of scientific research, which drew attention to the uh, qualitative differences in the child's psyche. Thirdly, uh, scientists and teachers wanted to improve the process of upbringing and educating children, which seemed impossible without knowledge of the laws of child's development.
So in society there was a need and interest in the study of child's mental development and the preconditions uh, for the formation of a new ideology of childhood were created. Therefore, at this time, new scientific directions of research of a child began to appear. They studied various aspects of child's development, and they were uh, child psychology, genetic psychology, the theory of maternal deprivation, psychoanalysis, psychoanalytic uh, pedagogy. In addition, uh, the ideas of pedocentrism became widespread. A child was the center of all family and school life, and childhood was considered to be a valuable and significant period of person development, a world with different views of life, norms, with its own language, which cannot be compared with the world of adults. The numerous studies of a child led to the formation of different approaches to understanding of, school, uh, of uh, childhood and children. They were uh, psychological approach, uh, sociological approach, and theological approach. They were different approaches to understanding of childhood and uh, children. According to the physiological approach, a child is considered to be a human being who didn't finish physical development, and childhood is a period of personal growth during which the development and improvement of a child takes place. Uh, a sociological approach, according to it, a child was considered to be a social being and childhood is a process of his socia uh, socialization. According to a theological approach, a child is considered to be a unique uh, person who forms relationships with the world on a Christian religious basis, and childhood is a period of unity of a child and the world, the formation of his uh, spirituality. In addition, some scholars studying child's development through the integration of data from different sciences, uh, physiology, uh, sociology, uh, psychology, pedagogy, considered a child as a whole uh, person uh, with certain features of physical, mental, and spiritual development. They also considered a childhood as an important, valuable period of formation of personality. According to this, humanization of social life and personal orientation of educational system were of particular importance. As a result, traditional approaches to a child as a whole, in particular the idea of personality as a combination of physical perfection, moral purity and spiritual wealth, as unity uh, or and inter interaction of mental activity and emotional volitional sphere of a child, became popular. And these humanistic ideas formed the basis of modern educational system. At the present stage of development of society, there are contradictory uh, tendencies concerning modern stage of childhood. Uh, despite uh, the increased uh, attention to childhood, uh, child's formation uh, and prevailing humanistic ideas, uh, there are some problems of childhood. Uh, they are a uh, crisis of family values, insufficiently effective social family policy, consumer behavior, informatization and uh, virtualization processes. This causes the loss of specifics of childhood, which is uh, the disappearance of uh, specific differences of children, uh, subjectivity and the identity of each child, the peculiarities that distinguish the world of children from the world of adults, or their replacement by elements of uh, adolescent subculture or adult culture. The specific features of the loss of uh, childhood are the following. The disappearance of certain elements of uh, children's subculture, children's folklore, traditional games, etc. The predominance of adult activities for children. The loss of purely uh, children's uh, specificity by uh, children's infrastructure, children's books, newspapers, magazines, food, movies, clothes, toys, entertainment. The transformation of children's infrastructure into uh, the children's entertainment industry. Reducing the level of children's cognitive development, their natural curiosity. Changing the content and culture of childhood. 
The reasons for the loss of the specifics of childhood are the following. Uh, certain destruction of institutions of so, uh, socialization, family and children's community, active dissemination uh, of uh, an aggressive media environment, assimilation of new screen patterns of behavior, criteria of beauty by children, a contradictory attitude to childhood, and as a result, the elements of childhood are replaced by elements of the adult world. Weakening of game interactive forms of uh, children's joint uh, activities, uh, insufficient level of people's spiritual development, etc. So, uh, at the present stage of society, the problem of preserving and maintaining the specifics of childhood is particularly important. Uh, the solution to it uh, means organizing uh, the state and uh, so, uh, society activities to meet the educational and cultural needs of children, their care with focus on the value of a child, and real recognition of the uniqueness and originality of childhood. Thank you for your attention.